think I tried to not let Paul get this big ever again, ever again, ever again, ever again. <laughs> Boop. What's up guys? It's Feeny and welcome to Wild Feeny Reads, a channel where we don't eat our words or look like total clowns. As the title says, we have another massive haul for today's video, this time from the month of January to March of 2022. And if you're an oldie but a goodie, you're probably thinking to yourself, Feeny, didn't you just have a massive haul video not that long ago where you said you were going to space out your- I know, I know, I know. But maybe some of you guys can relate to this because all of my pre-orders got delayed. So from November to December, a majority of them got smushed together from the months of late February to early March. And as a result, we have Hologan. And I am very overwhelmed. So I decided to catch myself up since I'm a little bit behind on monthly hauls and make one more massive haul video. But my spirit and my phone cannot take another 40 minute video, which by the way, guys, thank you so much for supporting that. I felt so bad. But I decided to break up this video into two parts. So this week's haul will be all this stuff on this side. And then next week's haul, or week and a half because I need time, is gonna be this side. And I am like a wiggly hand model, then a white step aside. And without further ado, let's jump on in. Wee. Howdy, tis I with my messy hair and pajama wearing glory. Just wanted to quickly pop in and mention two anime figures that were purchased during these months. Now they do have their own independent videos. So this is just gonna be a really quick recap since I like cataloging every figure that I get into these hauls. And also wanted to say that every figure featured in this part one, as well as part two, will be in the description box below, as well as a pinned comment with their designated timestamps, because I understand you're here for a good time, not a long time. I watch myself on 2x speed. I know what I am. And that's messy. <laughs> anyway, 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 quick recap on these two figures. And then we're gonna move on to the hall with a bunch of new figures. Okay, bye. First up, we have Gojo Satoru from Jujutsu Kaisen, 1 7 scale by E Stream, Shibuya Scramble, Alpha Satellite, Alpha Shibuya E, whatever. He's already been mentioned two times on my channel, so I will link both videos down below in the description box. So all I have to say right now is I love this figure so damn much. Great sculpt, great paint job, great size. You definitely would not be disappointed picking this figure up because I can honestly say he's not even my top 10. He is my top 5 in my whole collection. Next is Shinobu Kocho from Kimetsu no Yaiba, 1 8 scale by Kotobukiya. Do not let that 1 8 size fool you. She is more like a true 1 7th. She has a gorgeous butterfly base, a really ambitious sculpt, and a beautiful face. The only drawback would probably be her hori, which unfortunately has a lack of shading and a little bit of paint texture. Thankfully, it is forgivable since you can find this figure for well under $100. And for that, I think she's still worth the pickup. And now, let's get back to the haul with newer anime figures. Okay, let's finally start unboxing this massive haul. And if y'all noticed, we're in another location. The other side of my room, so hopefully it works out a-okay. Let's see here, what should we start with? All right, let's start with this teeny tiny box, which I think, I think I know what it is. Oh, Fregalay. All right, hopefully the camera angle is fine. I am literally on the carpet sitting on the floor, so we do our best here, top quality. Okay, so the first thing we have is 
Dark Magician Girl from Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters, Nendoroid by Good Smile Company. And oh my god, I know people are tired of Dark Magician Girl. I am not one of them. I think she looks absolutely perfect in her chibi form. And I could not say no to that included little Karibo. Oh, I love Yu-Gi-Oh! so much and I love Dark Magician Girl so much. She's so cute. She was originally supposed to come out in November, but got delayed on the Good Smile US web shop till February. So it's fine, it is what it is. Not the worst delay from Good Smile US. I will not open her up right now. I will do a cutaway of me opening her up because I am absolutely petrified of Nendroids and losing pieces. To say I was nervous taking her out would be a severe understatement, as this is the first time I have ever taken a Nendroid out of their box. But thankfully, Good Smile made the process easier by having a solid blister. And all of her pieces look really good, albeit I don't think there's enough swappable parts to justify her price. But then again, since I am petrified of Nendroids, it's just enough for me. Like, I'm not planning to change the poses or ever move this Nendroid ever again. But moving on to the figure. She looks fantastic. Oh, that facial expression is adorable. The sculpt is really great, especially in the hair with the nice shading. Honestly, the paint job in general is really clean and smooth, even for such a tiny, tiny little figure. She is top heavy though, so be warned. And the Kariba was perfect. Ugh, the star of the show for me. The one thing I was iffy about was her circle ring. It was, it's basically just laminated paper and was taped to the back of the cardboard. But putting everything together, which was an extremely painful process, it all looks so great. Since she is so top heavy, it was really hard for her to stay on her base, but damn, did Good Smile do a good job making her into a chibi form. It looks so cute. And I was even brave enough to change her faceplate and weapon, which I think I will keep it like this. Yeah, overall, I'm very happy that I have this Nendroid, and since they're making Bakura, I'm hopeful they'll make even more dual monster characters. But for right now, she is displayed with her pop-up parade counterpart and Joey Wheeler. Just three blondes that are having a good time. Okay, next. Ah! My darling! Okay, what should we do next? Let's do... Hmm. Let's do this. Let's do this. Obviously, it is from Big Bag Toy Store, and it can be one of two things. Ooh, wow, they gave me more bubble wrap than usual. <gasps> Yay! Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, we have the Polo from Spice and Wolf 1A scale by Revolve, you guys. So obviously, like I said, she was ordered from Big Bag Toy Store, which is... It's, it's, it's a reasonable U.S. retailer, and I think she came out originally in Japan like September or October, but she got delayed on that website until February also, so happy birthday month to me, I guess. So this figure is like an absolute gem in the figure collecting community. It seems like nobody really has anything bad to say about it except maybe the size of her. But even in box, she looks absolutely lovely. And this is my first Revolve scale. So I'm very excited to open her up. <gasps> Ooh. Okay. I got her all assembled. And you guys, this holo figure is breathtaking. Like, there's a reason why she's such a gem in the community. Initially, I wasn't sure if I was going to pick her up because I heard that she is small. Like, Holo is already a short character, and for a 1 8th, it's just like, oh, is it worth it? But I'm here to tell you, yes, it's worth it. The amount of work and pain, just, I'm in love with her. I'm so happy that I have her, honestly. <laughs> Did I say that already? Well, I'm, I'm repeating myself. 
going from the bottom up, we start off strong with a beautiful base. I love the luscious green grass. It's wonderfully sculpted and painted. Her shoes are so cute along with her ankle bangles. And I adore the green teal color of her dress. Lots of shading so you can see all the fabric folds and movement. The border along the hem of the dress is very clean and I love the sculpted flow of her belt. There's just so much movement. Revolve did not skimp out on no details because this tail is beautiful. Holo approved, magnificent sculpt and paint job, beautiful. And they even managed to make her beer mug look beautiful, which we all know Holo likes a good drinky drink and they definitely spared no expense putting detail work into that beer mug. But for me, the most important factor is the face, which I'm happy to report this face is Perfect. Oh, it's just so lovely. I love the open mouth sculpt with her canine showing. The intricacies of the hair sculpt are great. I also love the color choice of the hair in general. It goes with the flow of the figure. And her eyes are just beautiful. Honestly, this figure to me is holo. And I know some people complained about her size, which I will say she is small, but when you have her in hand and get a closer look, I don't even think about that because I'm just too lost in all the intricate details and craftsmanship that went into this figure. Like you can tell a lot of love and dedication went into it. And it's rare for me to say it, but to me, this figure is perfect. I totally recommend everyone getting her if you can, even if she is a little bit more on the aftermarket. Okay, I think, okay, this one, I, this one, I definitely know what it is. It's another box from Big Bad Toy Store. Yeah. Okay, so. We have Todoroki from My Hero Academia, from the Mission Hero movie. I believe this is from Bandai? Yes, it's from Bandai. And this is an Ichiban show figure, which I found out is an elevated price figure. So I'm pretty, pretty excited for this. Gosh, I'm sure I'm triggering some of you guys by the way I open some of these boxes. I ain't no delicate flower, okay? Ooh. Ooh, ooh. He, does he come head, yes, he comes headless. Oh, how disturbing, I love it. <laughs> oh my, this is a big boy. <laughs> okay, so this coaster comes with the two head options. One with the hood and one without, so. Wow, these are so heavy and robust, so I like that. <gasps> it's powder! Y'all, I got big old yaoi hands and even I had a hard time gripping this figure. He comes with his own clear plastic stand, which is pointless and useless because it did not even fit. So thankfully, he can stand on his own. But overall, I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how this figure looks getting a closer look at the details the shoes or I should say crocs are decent I love all the fabric folds at the bottom hem of his pants really nice sculpt work and I think it's a cool added touch that they added the texture at the bottom of his soles like they didn't need to do it but it's appreciated I also really like all the different paint variations of black and different textures to make his uniform pop, even though it is a more monochromatic look. All the metal is so clean and well sculpted, and I especially love the emblem on his shoulders. The face is decent, although the shape of his eyes are kind of off to me. His scar looks pretty good, and the hair is magnificent. Also nice shading to make his hair strands pop but he also comes with his exchangeable hooded head, which I think I actually prefer. He kind of reminds me of a Sith Lord from Star Wars. Eee! But it has a really cool embezzled or embedded, whatever it's called, texture on his hood. Yeah. Honestly, I had low expectations and they were met and then some. This figure is what is described as an elevated price figure. 
And I definitely don't regret picking up. Nope, nope, nope. What another happy surprise, yay. Ooh, gosh, we have three more, you guys. This one is from Ami Ami. And I definitely know what this one is, and I'm super excited. Kimono version by Stronger 1 8 scale? Yeah, 1 8 scale. Wow, I did not I did not know the box was gonna be this big because I know that she's a smaller figure. Anyway, uh, I actually picked her up I think like December 1st and I chose Surface Male Premium on Ami Ami and she just came in I would say like two, three weeks ago, so it took almost five months for her to come in. And actually, she was still in stock when I got her, so she wasn't from the pre owned section. And I only paid 9,000 yen for her, so a little bit under 90 USD, which I was very surprised I still had her in stock and for such a good deal. So I'm very excited. Oh, this box is so stunning. I almost want to keep her in the box. Just absolutely breathtaking. Which also, like, this box looks absolutely new. <laughs> like, nothing could happen to it. So, surface mail premium. Keep your box safe. <gasps> She's so beautiful. Okay, yeah, she is very teeny tiny. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. The detail is not lost on her tininess. Okay, so this is literally one of the most beautiful figures in my whole collection. And starting with the base, it's of a thick, clear plastic with sakura blossom imagery. It is very lovely, I've never seen that before. And I like how the little bouquet of flowers kind of ties in with it. Now, moving on to that gorgeous kimono. It has floral pattern as well as a bird crane. It is a little bit busy, but there is enough breathing room to fully understand and appreciate the kimono pattern. Plus the paintwork is pristine. I am literally in awe of how they pulled that off. I love the use of all the colors of the primary colors with the yellow, with the red, with the blue. You would think it would get too busy and overwhelming, but they all complement and contrast one another so well. Even the parasol has a great and clean paint job. I mean, nothing's out of place. And her face is so serene and gentle and beautiful. And I just love looking at it because it makes me so calm and happy. And the bird is so beautifully sculpted. It looks so light and delicate as if it just landed on her phalanges. I wish that there was a little bit more shading on it, but it translates as a bird. And they did her signature pigtails justice. I love the color teal that they went with and all the different gradations from the darker to the lighter. It's, it's beautiful. I've probably said the word love too many times when describing my feelings for this figure, but honestly, it's very well deserved and I think if you can, please get her. Plus, she is just a phenomenal addition to my ever-growing kimono collection. And if anybody knows any good male characters that are in kimonos or like formal wear, let me know. Okay, next one, next one, next one. It's from Amazon, and it is the Yami Medic from Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters by Kotobukiya 17th Scale. If you guys don't know, and you're new here, one of my dreams and goals for my collection is to have the sickest Yu-Gi-Oh! collection and it is a priority of mine to collect all the god card figures as well as as many like dual monster figures as I can. So this figure is one step closer to that. I'm not going to open him on camera because I have a grand plan for him 
or I should say a grand plan for all my Yu-Gi-Oh figures that are coming in. So uh, look forward to a Yu-Gi-Oh themed video unboxing. I don't know when, maybe in the summer, <laughs> early fall. It's, it's taken a while to get all my lovelies together, but I promise you, if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, it's gonna be worth it. All right, guys, we are at the last box for this video, part one. And this one, I mean, I've been excited for all my figures, but this one in particular, I would not call a grail, but it's a figure that I've had my eyes on for years and I'm happy to finally have her. So, as you can tell, this was purchased from Mandarake, and if you guys have never shopped there before, I really recommend them. Um, it's a toss up between which is cheaper, like Amiyami's pre owned section or Mandarake. Sometimes I find things cheaper there, and sometimes I find things cheaper at Amiyami. So, you gotta do your research, but I feel like at least when you order things from Mandarake, it's not like the Hunger Games of buying figures, you know? You have a little bit more time to think about what you wanna buy. And plus they tell you the prices for shipping up front. Although the only thing that gives me extreme anxiety about Mandarake is their website because it looks like it's from 1999. At least it makes me feel young again. Woo! Yeah, bubble wrap. Okay, so this figure that I've had my eyes on is Arshus Nay from Fat Third 1 6th scale by Orchid Seed. It's another first for me. I don't, I don't know this company. But she looks good. Um, I don't really have any deep feelings about this series or franchise. I just really like the art and I remember really liking Arshus Nay's character design. So, let's open her up. Oh, wow. Oh, the instructions were never touched, huh? Ooh, Ooh y'all, she looked good. Oh my goodness. Do I how do you remove the cake? <gasps> That's how <gasps> Oh god, that's always just so unnerving. Oh wow, this cape be heavy, y'all. This cape is heavy. Okay, let's put her together. <gasps> what? Is this top removable? Is this? What did I buy? <laughs> Wait a second. Wait. Fucking second. Oh my you there's nipples. <laughs> I did not know that she was a cast off. I looked at pictures on my figure collection. I didn't see anything. I'm sorry, I, I'll be right back. Like what? <laughs> Okay, we're back. Um, I'm a dumbass. Cause I must, I must have not been logged in when I went to look up pictures of this figure. Because as soon as I logged in, it's like, bam. <laughs> These knockers. I mean, it's kind of amazing. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> so I guess I um, unknowingly bought a cast off figure, which I don't know, like, I feel like I'm part of some exclusive club now. It's like, mm, yes, we do enjoy a refined color variation of the areola. <laughs> this is, I'm holding a pretend wine. Should I go get IRL wine? Okay, so I forgot to mention that this figure is old, like over a decade old. Now she don't look it, but she kind of feels it. Starting with her base, it's just a clear plastic base with the name of the show, but dear god will I always prefer a clear plastic base over a pig white or black one any day. 
She has got some beautiful thighs and leg muscles in that sculpt, and I really like the armor on her shoes. Unfortunately, she's incredibly imbalanced, like no wedges, nothing to help support her, so I put some museum putty underneath her lifted heel. Nonetheless, like it doesn't take away from the gorgeousness of her sculpt because homegirl has got a body yada 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 yay of the gods. Beautiful hands, awesome sword, amazing tits, and a scratch on her butt. <laughs> if anybody knows how to fix that, like a magic eraser, let me know. It was in the description, but unfortunately, um, it's a lot darker in person than in the photos. Oh well, I, I still love her. And her top is actually of this rubber material. Very hard to take off, so I'll keep her clothed for now. She has a really lovely hair sculpt, long and flowy. I love the contrast of her blue eyes against her darkened skin tone. She does have weird proportions of her face, but I find them actually very cute. You know what it reminds me of? Like early to mid 2000s anime figures. It's kind of campy, but also very charming. I don't know, there's just something about it that draws me in. I love the strength that this figure holds. Like, she is a mature, strong woman. Plus, it's nice to see some POC representation in anime figures, which is severely lacking, not only in the figure world, but just anime world in general. All right, it's done. The end of part one of this Neko haul is over. I'm tired, but I have to film one more bar right after this. <laughs> anyway, you guys let me know, what was your favorite figure from this haul in particular? It's hard for me to choose because I feel like I got a lot of winners, but I might have to choose Arsha Snae because that's a figure I've had my eyes on for a couple of years and I feel like I got a bargain because I got a feature that I didn't even know I was paying for, so <laughs> yeah. But if you guys can help me out, leave a like, leave a comment, and definitely subscribe if you haven't already because we have part two to look forward to and which is going to come out the following week. So I don't think you guys are going to want to miss out. Anyway, thank you guys so much once again for your time and I hope all of you have a great rest of your week and that you enjoyed this video. So until we meet again, bye!